would Elvis ever say happy birthday to you? Oh yeah, if it was your birthday, he would. What would Elvis, he do for your birthday? Elvis, I remember. I don't even remember what we got. I just, I, man, I can't remember. I know I got. I know what I got him because it's easy to remember what you get him. Yeah. Because it's, it's hard to shop for him. Yeah. I, I got him two things. I got him a gold toothpick, and he already had three, initialed. Uh, yeah, but he he did it. You did it in a weird, in a funny way, though. Oh, I did. He he set you up on that. Tell hey, us the toothpick what story. What happened was we went we were upstairs, and it was his birthday, and I said, "Well, you gonna open it?" He said, "Well, he's sitting on the he said, sitting on the side of the bed." And he said, "Yeah, I'll open it." So he opens it up, looks at it, and rolls his eyes and says, "Thanks." You know, I'm going. Like, then he turns around. He says, "Do me a favor. I want you to open the case right there. And put it in there for me, so we keep up with it." <clears throat> so when I opened it. Hell, there was three. I'm sitting in there, and so, and he just laughed. He thought it was so funny. And uh, after that, I told him, I said, from now on, I said, I'm the young. I'm, I may be young, but I ain't dumb. I said, I'm gonna get you a sweatsuit every time. I bought him sweatsuits. And Al and I would buy him sweatsuits. That's all we bought him. And you know, he wore them all the time. If you look at Elvis, he was wearing sweatsuits. Yeah. And, you know, we so bought you bought him. some of those. Yeah. So he must have liked your sweatsuits. Well, I mean, put it this way, he liked it better than they already had, right? So he could yeah. wear and tear it. And it was just something I tried. I didn't know any better at first. But once I, he's just a regular person. Hell, I just buy him sweatsuits. I bought him, uh, I, had, I had the company make his own rackets, racquetball rackets for him. So describe that racket to us. This is a cool racket. It was uh, red all the way around, then it had a handle. But inside the handle, there's a spot right here. Here's the handle, like right here. But right here is like a V. And in that V was a, uh, like a little guitar, and it said Elvis Presto. Wow. And, I mean, I've yeah, never seen that. It was in blue. I'll never forget it. But it, once again, somebody got it and disappeared. A lot of stuff disappeared. I don't, I don't know how all the stuff got rid of it. Sort of, it, it used to, it sort of freaked me out because people were taking, you know, I don't know who took it, what, who, what, but. So let's talk about that. The next day where he died on the 16th, mm -hmm. on the 17th, in the jungle room. There were pillars already missing. Because, you know, when you go to sit down, there's not a pillow there. Mm -hmm. I noticed that. And, I'm like, and I didn't say anything because you were going through all the, you know, him dying. We had people coming through all over the place. It was crazy. But there was no pillows. There's people just helping themselves to stuff. I, somebody was getting them. But there was like seven. We used to have seven to eight pillows around that whole. Because, you know, when you had the couch. Yeah. And you had that other little. Remember, you, what was that? The little driftwood, you know. Yeah. About? So we had that set up. And we'd always put stuff right there. And then I said, everything was gone. And I'm going, wow. And that's the next day. That's the next day. So he was being robbed, basically, right I away. I can't use that word, robbed. You can't say I get, okay. I get in trouble. <laughs> okay. I don't well, so it let's just tough, say... Stuff was missing. Let's just say things were missing. There you Is go. that a fair assessment? Yeah, that's very okay. fair. Okay. I mean, but... It, and they were... Which, 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 you know, the funny thing about it... I don't know where half the people got half the stuff they sold. Well, I mean, I never I, questioned I think them. people lifted things. I mean, I've never questioned any of the stuff. But I look at some of the stuff I see, I'm going like, wow. You know, I had somebody... Uh, I mean, I know Elvis gave a lot of stuff away, but Elvis wow. Elvis gave a lot of stuff away. But some of the stuff that was at missing was just crazy stuff, you know, that I would say, well, Elvis gave me this. I'm going like, dang, I was there in those three years. I can't recall. Yeah, what did he give you in those three years? Oh, Other than just a normal... I know he gave you cars and... Elvis gave me a TCB, starting now. He gave me a ring. We were in, uh, we were on tour. I can't remember the place, but we were on tour. And Elvis came in there and had a, a jeweler come in there. He had Lola Hayes a lot, a lot. Had another guy come in there. And this guy, somebody came in there. I can't remember if it was Lola or somebody else at the time. Had a briefcase. And, El and he gave me one ring that had like, I'd say 20 diamonds, little diamonds around it. And uh, it was just like a rough gold, rough mm -hmm. gold, and he gave me that. And Elvis gave me uh, puka shells when we went to Hawaii, you know, those little puka shells. Yeah. He gave me some puka shells. Uh, let's see, what else did he give me that was, uh, you know, anything, I, if, I, if I was, if I just said, hey, Elvis, I need something, he would have given it to me. I, I just didn't, I didn't need anything because, I mean, I mean, yeah, I got my own stuff. But I'm sure people did that all the time. There was a lot of certain people coming in there and trying to borrow money and do things, and I don't, I, you know, at the time I was so young, nobody ever told me what was going on. But after, after you look at back now, you see a lot of stuff. Yeah. You can see like, but he 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 gave me all that. But what was funny, I've told you the story, but it, it was really funny though because when I first he gave me the Nissan, 
and it, the first color I picked out was green, okay, like a British green. Well, I ended up with a copper, okay, because he, he, he bought a brand new one. He didn't want me to have a demo. So it was no later than 70, 1976, six months later, whatever. He's buying me, he's giving me a black Grand Prix. Okay, let's think about this. What color is his studs? Black. Okay, what's a Grand Prix look like? Black like studs. Okay, okay. Yeah. and he, because well, he, he was in the numerology, and he wanted me to have the same kind of stuff. So what he did was he had a moon roof put in it. I mean, it came with it. Then he had, it was leather. Then he had a CB radio. And he thought it looked like him. And, that, and he wanted me to be like that. So I proceeded to keep the car probably for about, I guess five months or something. But the sad thing about it was, it was so big. I was a kid. I, I just want something little, just, you know, in and out. So one of my dad's friend calls me and I bought a Jensen Interceptor. You know what that mm -hmm. is. Yeah. So I bought a Jensen. That, Which is a James Bond looking car. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it was green. It was cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I parked it at Grace. Now, this was funny. I never told you this. He comes up, walks out the door, looks to the right, and sees it. And he says, Damn, whose car is that? Well, that's Dean's. Who? Dean's. So he comes up to me and he says, uh, Damn, you got a used car a lot? He said, you're going through more cars. Because this is like in, I guess, two years, I done bought three different cars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he, he he drove it. He liked it, you know. So we went on tour, come back. I kept the car probably eight weeks to maybe maybe two. It might, it might have been three. It might be three months. I don't know. But the master cylinder went out in it. And nobody could fix it in Memphis. And I didn't have time to go to Huntsville or Atlanta to get it fixed. So I sold it to some guy at a shop turned around and I went and bought with that money a Corvette and so when I I'm not gonna tell you my, my experience with Corvette right yet but I'm gonna tell you when I went to Grayson and parked my Corvette who do you think comes out the front door at night Elvis whose car is that and he saw and he gave me hell I bet it was fun hell but it was so funny because I had a Corvette now, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I kept that Corvette for a long time. I didn't get, I think I kept it 10 years. There's a lot of photos of it mm -hmm. at Grayson. Yeah, and I kept that, I love that car. That was a fun car, but the only reason why I got rid of it, I, mean, I didn't have any room. I, I, had, I, had, I, bought, I bought a St. Bernard, and I couldn't put, it was just me and the dog driving all the time. <laughs> I had the T-tops open, and it was me and St. Bernard. <laughs> and we did that for a long time. I mean, and my mom would just laugh, you know. Back then, you know, she said that dog should tear up your car. I said, Mom, it's okay. It's okay. She's cheaper. So it's safe to say that <laughs> for a while there, for a while there, Elvis was feeling Dean's bringing more cars up in Graceland than I was. Oh, uh, there he was. Well, it'd be hard to say that, uh, but uh, it's safe to say that uh, he knew when he came and asked me if I had to use car lot. I thought that was pretty funny. That is funny. But see, I wouldn't ever take. If he gave me something, I didn't want it. I mean, I, I gave it back. I'd offer it back. He would never take it back. That's how much a good, that's a giver. You know, he don't want anything back. I gave this to you, do mm -hmm. what you want with it. But my dad took the one and the, uh, he took the 240Z and my sister, I gave it to my sister for graduation, which I thought was great because she had spent her money to get her anything. So that, you know, next thing I know, she wraps it around Isaac Hayes' uh, telephone post in front of his house. All right, Dean, so, so you were talking about that first car that Elvis bought you, mm -hmm. you ripped your check. But fast forward a few months later, and you're outside with Elvis, and what happens? Elvis sees that car that he bought you, and then he say, "What did he say to you, Dean?" Are you talking about what, the, what we've already talked about, or just something? The one, the car that he bought you when you first got paid, and went down there, and he came in and ripped the check up. Well, what happened was, and I six months, six or seven months later. The, the, okay, I got you. What he was saying was, that sounds bright, really. Yeah. He, he said uh, Elvis came in there, and he, he with that check. And it, when he, first he tore the check up, okay? Yeah. They told him the check was no good. Mm -hmm. So then we're on tour, coming back. And he's got the black Grand Prix already waiting on him. He's got it at Graceland. And, you know, that's how much we had So he bond. planned that himself. Yes, we had a bond. That's the way he would, he, he was so, I, I don't know if you ever see, he was so much into numerology, numbers. You know, he want, if you ever go to numerology, read which birthday is, and you'll see a lot of stuff is, probably what you're thinking, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But he told me on the plane, he said, you know that car you got? And I said, yes, sir. He said, that's the most ugliest car I have ever seen. He said, that is ugly. I looked at him, I said, well, you picked it out. I said, you picked that color out. 
I said, I had the green one. You picked out that one. He just laughed. But I guess he's setting me up for when we got back. So when we get back, I drive up, and I'm not thinking nothing of that car, that black Grand Prix, because mm -hmm. I got a new car. I'm happy. He says, uh, pulls up, he goes, he gets out, he talks to me, he says, well, how do you like your new car? I said, do what? <laughs> and he walked around it, and, and he showed me how to, he got on CB radio, which was funny. And he says on there, he says, uh, breaker, breaker, you know, we got, we got the king here, who got over here, you know, and this guy's like, somebody, some old country boy picked it up and says something back to him. And that guy had no idea he was talking to Elvis, you know, which was pretty cool. Because, you know, how many people going to talk to Elvis on CB radio mm -hmm. back then? Mm -hmm. And he tried to show me how to use it. So, I, and, I, and I was very clumsy. I didn't know how to do all that kind of stuff. And I'm not one of your, that's why my dad was a doctor. He's good with the, all that good stuff. I'm just the opposite. You know, mm -hmm. like but I mean, but it, that was back in some fun days. I mean, you can't worry. I always tell people all the stuff he gave me. I don't worry about that. You can't take the memories. Exactly. You know, I I, I don't worry. Like I, some of the stuff I gave Dad back because I wanted he needed to make some. He needs some yeah. money. So I didn't care. We we had a good relationship. My dad and I had a good relationship where we do anything for each other. So. If you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.